नमस्ते एंड यू आर ऑन द नेशन एट फाइव कमिंग टू लाइव फ्रॉम द सी एन एन न्यूज एटीन न्यूज रूम लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इफ देर वर इन्फिल्ट्रेटर्स एंड टेररिस्ट हुर कॉट इन अ लैंड माइंड ब्लास्ट एंड लास्ट इवनिंग वी पुट आउट द कन्फेशन ऑफ अ टेररिस्ट हू सेट दैट अ पाक आर्मी पर्सनल पेड दम मनी हियर इज मोर CNN News 18 has been able to access details that will shock you ladies and gentlemen these details only show the extent of the treachery by the enemy on the other side who's using this entire ceasefire to mobilize huge resources along the line of control and the international border what CNN News 18 has been able to access with inputs from our investigations editor Manoj Gupta is that there are nearly 25 to 30 terror launch pads right along the line of actual control and the border and there are at least 20 terror camps that are brimming with terrorists waiting to infiltrate and cause absolute mayhem on indian soil pakistan has placed launch pads at multiple entry points every terror launch pad is just 2 to 3 kilometers from the line of control pakistan planning to increase the frequency of infiltration and all jihadi outfits all the terror outfits are working together they are pooling in resources we have told you this in the past on the 26th of july we put out the details and thereafter we've been continuously updating you but the lashkar hizbul jaish al badr have all combined ranks and they are working together at these launch pads 300 small weapons have been transported into india via drone drops already nearly 300 if not more small arms and weapons have been transported via drone drops into indian soil towards inside jammu and kashmir there are weapon caches that are established in and around shrinagar nearly 50 foreign terrorists 50 foreign terrorists are embedded already in shrinagar itself this should set the alarm bells ringing that yes every day our forces are neutralizing many terrorists but there are many more who are already hidden within and there are hundreds who are waiting to infiltrate 50 foreign terrorists are already based in the main town of shrinagar and they are waiting over orders from their park handlers they are also getting support via ogw so 300 small arm and weapons to to push this hybrid terror module 50 foreign terrorists on indian soil near shrinagar main town but more importantly the terror launch pads which have all been moved closer to the line of control now here is more ladies and gentlemen we show you the exact locations the locations of the terror map terror launch pads and also the terror camps we have marked out both along the line of control and the international border and you will be shocked to see the locations the red dots and these are this is the actual map that we have been able to access and we have recreated what our inputs have been uh, 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 our investigations editor manoj gupta has shared now let me just tell you the red dots are all the terror camps where are they in the swat region in naran mardan abbottabad and all these regions the yellow ones are the launch pads and look how close this is the india pakistan border and then of course the loc comes in here so this is the loc and the india pak main international border and all around that around the border and also the loc you have terror launch cap pads which have been which have mushroomed and nearly 30 let's count them 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 and one more 27 now these are the launch pads abdul bin masood chelabandi manastaya deolian garhi dupatta safaida halan shumali bag alibad forward kahuta rawala kot डुंगी हजीरा सेंसा कोटली पलनी पलानी निकियाल कुंड समानी कोट कोटेरा एंड खुरियतानी सो दीज आर द लॉन्च पैड्स एंड द टेरर कैंप्स आर खालिद बिन वलीद गरी हबीबुल्ला उमर बिन खताब अतर 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 शीशा आबटाबाद तेरबेला नौशेरा काहुटा झेलम एंड ऑफ कोर्स द जफर इकबाल बायवा नौशेरा एंड दिस इज द सेक्टर where the infiltrators were stepped onto a landmine were some of them blown away one of them saved and he is the one who confessed that it's a pak army colonel who paid him 30000 rupees to go and kill and also die 
That's what he had said. And that's the confession that came in yesterday. But look at the proximity and they are all waiting. They are waiting to cross over. And nearly 50 foreign terrorists are already in Srinagar. More than 300 weapons have been dropped via drone into Jammu and Kashmir already. These are the inputs that we are sharing with you. Uh, absolutely shocking details, jaw-dropping details that we've been able to access. Uh, I'm going to go across to our guest, Major General K.K. Sinha, defense expert who served in Jammu and Kashmir and he knows these regions very well. And we also have Rajinder Kumar, former special director of the Intelligence Bureau, also joining us at this point. General K.K. Sinha, we've discussed these uh, terror bases, camps and infiltrators, but this is nearly 30 launch pads, 30 launch pads along the LOC and closer to the IB. Uh, uh, Narshaman, uh, good afternoon. Uh, what you are revealing and what your, um, you know, your editor, you know, he has got the details. These are fairly very accurate, uh, you know, information which you have got, and I, I believe that even intelligence agencies have got. You, you know, you know what you have explained. I will just try to, you know, give it in a nutshell the summary. If you will take it to your LOC, which is 740 odd kilometers, and if you start from Guraj. Then you come down to Sundarbani in between. You know the names because I'm taking the names of our side, whether it yeah. is the Neelam Valley, Kale, Tangdhar, Chakoti, Gulmarg, which we all we know, Punch, yes. Rajari, Nasera, and Sundarbani. If you take this area of 740 kilometers, when you have given you know the terror camps, basically these people have come. Nangarhar area was which in Afghanistan, they had the three camps and the money was coming from China. So these three camps, and it had both LAT, JEM, all Al Badar, uh, HUM, that is Harkat e Mujahideen, and HM also joined a letter state. These camps also had that um, TPP, Tahrike Taliban, Pakistan, Pakistan, Pakistan group, you know, people over there. They came to Peshawar. Peshawar has got what you are saying, Manesar area. Then in, in yeah. that area, the three camps, and then you know, basically the two basic camps of Muchaprabad and down Kale. Kale is being controlled by three POK brigade, the famous POK brigade, which is yeah. they have a lot of expertise for infiltration. Now, when this you know is happening and the proof is there, even today the three have been killed. So uh, you know we have got zero infiltration policy and the grid which we have established. But what is surprising, what you are giving that 50 is already sitting and probably they are yes. from LAT and JEM. If yep. LAT and JEM, and basically what is happening, the two things, the Pakistan restructure, there is ISHP, Islamic State of Valyan Hind. You know, it is a different model altogether. So they have been given the complete thing in the Pakistan and what is happening in the TRF, the total resistance front and KFF, you know, which is happening in the area of Srinagar. And what you say that 300 odd weapons have already been dropped by your drones, mm. and these are with these you know, 50 odd terrorists, which is sitting with, along with the OGW. So it is going to be a very challenging time. And I think we have to become very proactive. You know, these informations are fine if we are sitting on it. If we try to catch these people, it will be a very different altogether. Because this time, it is not only, you know, they have got suicide bombers. And this is a definite news because ISI along with the Haqqani network, they have organized this. So they have got suicide bombers. And if you remember, day for yesterday, Russia, in Russia, one terrorist who has been, you know, somewhere recruited into the area of Central Asian Republic, Yes. And he was being infiltrated through, you know, Russian route. So these are, you know, these things, if you put the dots together in a very challenging yeah. time. No, not just challenging, General K.K. Sina. What we are actually seeing at this point in time is a very, very devious plot. 50 foreign terrorists sitting in Srinagar town, Rajinder Kumarji. And there are at least 300 such caches and weapons which have already been dropped by drones. The other day, we got inputs that one of the drones that's been shot down had made 76 sorties. 76 sorties one drone itself had made. This is a huge challenge for us. Anandji, see, the thing is that this is a 
uh, as far as uh, infiltration in Kashmir is concerned, it is a pet project of the ISI. As long as ISI is there and Pakistan army is there, this thing would continue. So if we should not be under any illusion that the political circumstances or any other thing would change this thing, this will continue. Now let me tell you two things. See, the main supply line comes from the area of Lahore, uh, uh, Jhelum, and some other uh, 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 districts of Punjab. From there, they are brought to uh, Mujafrabad and Sialkot and kept in the camps. From there, they are again taken to the border, uh, Madarsa is located near the border. And from there, and these are all escorted up to this place by ISI officers. Then ISI right. officers hands over them to the local posts, which are there on the LOC of the Pakistan Army. From there, they, they wait for the appropriate uh, time, like mm -hmm. uh, rains and uh, dew and other things, when right. they try to infiltrate these people. So if there are 50, I'm not surprised. If there are 300 sitting there, they are, I'm not surprised. Let me also tell you one thing. A lot of people say that if they are coming from Afghanistan or this and that, that can... See, it is a Pakistani this thing to divert this, spread this, this information that Afghanistan from they have come from the Afghanistan and this camp is there. They are, their camps are all in Pakistan. They are, all camps are in yeah, and, Kashmir and Punjab. Yeah, most, to, of, the, most of the recruits are from South themselves. Punjab region of Pakistan. Yeah, they are just creating alibi for themselves by saying that in Afghanistan or anything. Why they should come in Afghanistan and Pakistan is one thing. Why they should travel so far? Hmm. And in Afghanistan, let me tell you, Pakistanis never trust Afghanis. However, right. I give you one thing, even a most cutter uh, Taliban would not be so even Akani would not be trusted by Pakistani hmm. <coughs> ISI fellow. Right. So these are all these fellows are there. This is a continuous operation. Even ISI, we, uh, ISI has issued permits to Slaudin and company to carry weapons, hmm. to move around wherever un, un, uh, unhindered. Hmm. Everything, he always carries those letters and some, I, I believe there are some documents and uh, there is a uh, Actual right. document available somewhere of Pakistan ISI directing everybody to help them. Yes, not to be there is. Yes, there is not just communication, Rajinder Kumarji. We put it out here also that the instructions now is to pool resources. It's not individual jihadi outfits. They've all got to come together and they've got to they've got to work on it together. Is what uh, and pool resources and that's why we are given to understand. And on 26th of July, we had put out the story that in one of the camps, Tala Saeed was there of the Lashkar. Other camp, you had Asgar uh, who, uh, of the Jesh. And in the third camp, you had uh, uh, the Al-Badar guy. And, and, and he was present there. So so, uh, so all of these people are actually pooling in resources. And most of these terror camps are also not far away from what General K.K. Sena mentioned as the 3POK Brigade. Now, I'm just going to call for that map again and General K.K. Sena, what should be India's counter? Because this is a case where uh, ceasefire, uh, if you can call the map here on the screen, if you, in, in the case of a ceasefire, the Pakistanis are only becoming far more robust in terms of the number of uh, terror camps. This Gadi Habibullah near that, uh, not far away from Gadi Habibullah is where one of the other, uh, the park brigade uh, and army camps are. Abbottabad and Noshera also you have park army camps. Uh, so the military is present. The drone is coming in somewhere in between where the jihadi camps and the park army brigade is there. And from there the drone is being sent. So somewhere there is active Pakistani army help. If we go by the confessions of this terrorist, Tabarak Hussain, yesterday, he says that it was a uh, Colonel Yunus Chaudhary who gave me 30,000 rupees to go and kill and die. So, how do we how do we negate this? Do we then break ceasefire? Do we do a counter-attack and negate all these threats here on these terror camps? Or do we continue to wait and wait for them to enter Indian territory and then kill them? Uh, Narsiman, uh, I have always of the view that you have to be uh, proactive in your uh, operations. If you have a defensive mindset and you will allow these people to come, they have been doing from ages. 
We have mm. only the twice we have gone proactive in one case Balakot and one was that you know after the Uri we carried out the you know strike the surgical strike. See the point is not like that that you do it and it will get over. The point is coming like this. You know it is a total change game. In the Mission Kashmir, in a new form, they have dumped the K2 plan for the time being. They are going for Mission Kashmir. We have to understand. We can't say that the people are just coming from Bhavanagar, Bhavakpur. We all know right. those. That is the catchment area of recruit. But these are hardcore terrorists. Believe it or not, they are the suicide bombers. The things are not only just coming. If if right. Russia can give you the input that these the people are coming from the Central Asian Republic, which never happened. You know, and they were just getting you know sneaked in India, and they have given the information, they nabbed it. Mind you, when you are giving information, that 50 years, this is a hybrid. It is a target killing. Yes. It is not that you know those things. Uh, you know, days have gone where they were trying to hit. You know, in, in in a different way. It is a target killing. It is the OGW. OGW is not been you know 9,000 odd OGWs which was identified mm -hmm. out of the 12,000. You know, they are, most of them are sitting, you know, ideal over there. And, yes. you know, you, whether you call it a slipper cell, see, we can't negate. We have to go proactive. Pakistan army, but, but, you know, but, a lot of these the pressures but, are coming. But here is the, that to here is the, the fire. Correct. Because the one, the, on the one hand, the jihadis are after the Pakistanis to try and activate there so that they can push more uh, infiltrators under the cover fire of the Pakistani army. On the other hand, the counter narrative is if India was to go and take some punitive proactive measure, it gives the Pak army, which is perhaps politically uh, facing a lot of flack, and Imran Khan is doing the job of trying to weaken the establishment and the perception of the establishment. Uh, and uh, we play into the Pak army's hands, which suddenly then tends to flex muscle to say, because that's the only narrative that they have, that's the Kashmir narrative. And then they try to spread themselves and become stronger again, Rajinderji. So what are you doing? How do we counter this? Plus, how do we decide and how do we identify these 15 foreign terrorists who are in Srinagar main town already? That's the input. That's far more worrying. And there are at least 300 weapons for them to try this hybrid uh, warfare. That is shoot and scoot with short arms. See, we, uh, the agencies has the means to identify where they are sitting how, and what they will be doing. Agencies take their own time to act on these uh, inputs because ultimately the purpose is to neutralize them. And right. uh, it is not that the premature thing is uh, started and uh, they run away and we and they know now they, then they know that you were, where is their lacuna. So. At every appropriate at every appropriate time, the agency would take action. The security forces would take action, whether it is this local police or the PSF or the army, the CRP, whosoever are uh, in charge of that area, they will take mm. action. So uh, quite a few of uh, many of them are, are already identified with the agencies and uh, uh, op operational plans are always underway. That's why you must right. have seen that they may succeed to carry out some actions, but at the same time, within few mm. months, uh, within a mm. period of month or two, everybody is mm. neutralized. Uh, who was involved with any operation terrorist action in Kashmir? There mm. is a very good intelligence system. I must appreciate mm. all the security forces. They have a very good intelligence mm. system, and there is a lot of coordination among themselves. So there is a thing. Mm. But yes, the question mm. is how to uh, handle Pakistan. That is a big thing. And today, mm. Pakistan, the problem with Pakistan is <coughs> Pakistan, right. the only uh, America is no longer interested in Pakistan. And China is a good friend of Pakistan. China would not do anything. In fact, China is helping them. Like Jashem Ahmad, was, uh, China prevented Jashem Ahmad being declared a terrorist organization. Right. So Ch right. China is there. And I, I, I would say that it, <coughs> we have to, if we uh, put pressure on China, we have to certain, we have to, somebody somewhere, not has to launch covert so, operation. Sir, to we have to do all of uh, that there, but this is, this is clear and present requirement and danger at this point in time, which is waiting, which is lurking. And when they, if any of them gets in, they're going to strike. I'm just going to quickly recap as I thank uh, Rajinder Kumarji and uh, General K.K. Sinha, Major General K.K. Sinha for joining us here on this exclusive news break. Our investigations editor Manoj Gupta getting us this entire map. These red dots are the terror camps which are active, brimming with jihadis. These are the launch pads. 
less than two to three kilometers from the from the international border and also the line of control, ladies and gentlemen. So the international border extends outside, but the line of control cuts in and comes closer in here in the, in in the in the Kashmir region. So here, that's where you have these camps, which are all active in POK, and then here on the Pakistani side, on the other side of the border. And look at the locations. The terror camps are at Khalid bin Walid, Gari Habibullah, Umar bin Khattab, uh, Atar, Atar Shisha, Abitabab, Terbela, uh, Noshera, Kahuta, Jhelum, and of course, Zafar Iqbal and Baiwa. But the launch pads, nearly 27 of them, are all across, and they're spread. And each one houses at least 50 to 100 terrorists, if not more. Most importantly, in Srinagar, there are at least 50 foreign terrorists, FTs, foreign terrorists, who are already embedded in Srinagar main town. And there have been drone drops, which have dropped nearly 300 short-arm you know, weapons, like uh, small rifles or even pistols and uh, revolvers. So they have all already been dropped, and they are already in Jammu and Kashmir. That's a serious threat to, uh, for uh, the people of Jammu and Kashmir. And of course, if they spread to the rest of India, then we know what we are facing. But this is active backing. All the terror groups have combined ranks. And of course, the Pak military uh, giving them a huge amount of support logistically and otherwise uh, here on this side as these camps are mushrooming uh, faster. And look at the thickness of the launch pads uh, along the line of control and the IB. We will get back to this story later tonight on the right stand. For the moment, shifting focus here on the nation at five to politics and the developments which are happening in Jharkhand, where the chief minister could soon find himself disqualified as an MLA. The recommendation has already gone in a sealed envelope by the election commission to the governor. The governor is back in Jharkhand and uh, has said that once he gets back into his office, he is going to make the call and uh, open and then decide as to what may happen. But in all probability, the recommendation is that Himan Soren has to go. Now, will there be Parivarwad on display with the wife or the father or the brother or, the, or, or, the, or somebody within the family uh, taking his place? Or will it be a close confidant, somebody who's running his day-to-day -day affairs, who will be put in that seat? Because he does have the numbers, but there are also the aspects of resort politics, which each of the parties, the Congress party, cutting all its MLAs off to a resort, uh, the, the JMM trying to protect its flock. And uh, there is again talk that Operation Lotus is somewhere, uh, is, is, will, will come in. Let's listen into the reactions that have come in so far. Shupriya Bhattacharya on Eman Sorin, Alamgir Alam and Nishikant Dubey of the BJP. अभी तक का कोई डेवलपमेंट के बारे में कोई ऑफिशियल कम्युनिकेशन नहीं है और चूंकि यदि चुनाव आयोग संवैधानिक संस्था है उसकी गोपनीयता कैसे भंग हुई ये एक आपराधिक कृत्य है यदि सिलबंद लिफाफा है चुनाव आयोग का तो वो गवर्नर साहब उसकी पुष्टि करेंगे कोई सांसद उसकी पुष्टि नहीं कर सकता और यदि सांसद उस पर क्लेम करता है तो जो लॉ ऑफ द कोर्ट है उसको अपना काम करना चाहिए लेट द डिसीजन कम देन आफ्टर वी विल डिसाइड जब तक हमको आया नहीं आप लोग खुद बोल रहे लिपावा बंद आया है अब उनको कैसे जानकारी अभी तक तो हमारे जो माननीय मुख्यमंत्री बार कोई नोटिस कोई नोटिस नहीं आया है जब तक नोटिस नहीं आएगा तब तक हम क्या इस पर बोल सकते हैं लेकिन अगर हमारा पक्ष में नहीं आया विपक्ष में हमारा अगर आता है तो हमारा हमारा संख्या बल ज्यादा है और सब एम एल जो जो अभी अभी सबसे बात हुई है जरूरत पड़ेगा तो सारे लोग को बुलाएंगे यू हैव ट्वीटेड जय श्री जो हार जय श्री राम झारखंड में काम हो गया वॉट इज दैट मीन काम हो गया मतलब एके फोर्टी सेवन के साथ प्रेम प्रकाश पकड़ा गया दलालों के सरगना जो है वो अमित अग्रवाल को आज जीडी ने बुलाया था बीमार हो गए आज लोकपाल का केस है 25 तारीख को शायद उसकी सुनवाई आज हो जाए तो शायद सोरेन परिवार के ऊपर केस हो इसी के लिए मैंने कहा था कि जैसे राम जोहार हो गया काम और मुझे लगता है कि काम हो गया भ्रष्टाचार से जो है हम लोग जो मुक्ति दिलाना चाहते हैं झारखंड की आम जनता को उसके आधार पर भारतीय जनता पार्टी आगे बढ़ रही है और भारतीय जनता पार्टी के कार्यकर्ताओं के लिए आज जश्न मनाने का दिन इलेक्शन कमीशन ने आज यदि पत्र दे दिया राज्यपाल साहब को 
तो उतना तो मुझे पता होगा ना कि भेजा है लेकिन आपके माध्यम से यदि पत्रकारों के माध्यम से मुझे पता चल रहा है कि सदस्यता चली गई तो हमारे लिए जश्न मनाने का दिन है और झारखंड मुक्ति मोर्चा क्या कर रही है कांग्रेस क्या कर रही है इससे मुझे कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता है उनकी सदस्यता यदि चली गई है और भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ यदि थोड़ी भी मॉरलिटी है तो हेमंत सोरेन जी को इस्तीफा देना चाहिए और मिड टर्म इलेक्शन के लिए जाना चाहिए नमस्ते जेंटलमैन वॉट्स हैपनिंग इन झारखंड Did Hemant Soren not know that he is not supposed to conduct, or is this just the tip of the iceberg, Rashid Kijwai? I think if the, it's a matter of uh, you know moral turpitude, then he has to go. But if the political opponent of his, they look at as they say it in Hindi, uh, uh, that abda me ausar, then of course it makes a very different case. So therefore, we need to see it. Uh, theoretically speaking, if a chief minister is uh, you know is disqualified, then. Uh, He must resign, and if his formation does not have the numbers, then the state where there is already a coalition government, then it should head for uh, uh, you know fresh elections. But if if uh, if if uh, if a Ganga Snan of a political nature can help uh, him tide over all kind of crisis, then it's a different thing. Uh, so we need to wait and watch because we have seen that several people who came under some kind of you know glare, uh, how they were able to. Uh, Uh, you know, ward off that kind of thing by just switching political loyalties. No, but but this uh, Ganga Snan washing machine theory, do you subscribe to that, Rashid Ji? Or is it that no, the country is un- incapable of uh, staying away from graft and uh, and also office for profit? How is it that uh, uh, wherever there is the opposition parties which are involved? and that to those which are wanting to which have national ambitions etc or do even those which have overwhelming mandates how is it that they get involved in graft and office for profit i'm glad anand you asked this question because we have a very corrupt political system i keep saying and i've written also extensively that the election of every mp and mla has a poll limit ceiling and uh, by you know uh, practical this thing you may have also seen most of them actually mm-hmm. in fact all of them they violated that they spent lot more so we have a very corrupt system but when it comes to accountability in the recent 5 6 7 8 years we have seen only the leaders who are from non nta uh, stable they are the ones who are taken to task now this is something that's intriguing and i would say a bit uh, you know bizarre as well hmm. well i i've just got information on uh, further information coming through and uh, this is coming from saurabh uh, uh, who's also tracking the developments although he is currently in bihar is tracking the developments in jharkhand also and uh, the update from ranchi is that governor ramesh bais is in a meeting with officials at the raj bhavan on the matter of cm hemant soren uh, the governor had said that upon reaching that he will go to his office and then only he will look at what needs to be done next after looking at the recommendation by the election commissioner Uh, there is no government cm uh, meeting at the moment uh, there's no meeting that's been fixed yet and the governor is studying the report of the election commission that's what we are given to understand we'll uh, try and see if we can speak with saurabh but uh, varun singh uh, t- by then let me just ask you this what is going to happen in jharkhand phir sarkar badlegi now they they the allegation from the opposition now is that the bjp is busy toppling governments you know uh, the governor has to first publish it in the gadget if there is a recommendation that the chief minister has been disqualified his mla has been disqu- his uh, term as an mla has been disqualified or membership of the legislative assembly it has to be first published in the gadget by the governor only then can there be a uh, you know reply to what you are asking but right now i don't see a government change happening in jharkhand because Sorin family has many people from their family who are MLAs, and not only that, the other big mm. thing is that the Congress doesn't want to let go of power in any form. That is the reason you see that they have tried to hold their flock together, and everyone mm. right now they aren't, you know, seem to be someone as a family which doesn't stand together. But mm. uh, if one talks about, you know, uh, why mm. is it non NDA? Mm. leaders who are being questioned so why are the non nda right. leaders when they know that the central agencies are with the bjp or with the nd mm. why are they getting involved into graft the see right. there is a serious allegation against mr huh. soren that is of huh. office of profit and co- he right. allotted himself stone mining coring you know uh, huh. licenses which is completely completely wrong as a cm to do it and now the election commission gave a 
a fair hearing both the parties were invited lawyers from both the sides came and right. they spoke over there they had their pleadings over there after which the election commission has come out with a certain observation which it has sent to the governor but to be honest right. i don't see the government changing so soon because as both the parties are desperate to hold on to power and hold they have the power. number and many and and many of them you know right. many of them from soren family are mlas so 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 it's not things are not going to be topply turbly in terms of the government is concerned but the chief minister may have to go let me ask sort of sort of the governor is he going to take a decision today or will we have to see what happens uh, until tomorrow Uh, see, Anand, mean, what we are learning from our sources that uh, Governor Ramesh Bai is in a meeting with the officials at Raj Bhavan, and, uh, and he is discussing the matter and he is seeing the report. He is studying the report of the Election Commission uh, regarding uh, Hemant Soren's uh, uh, hmm. the report that has come, the uh, recommendation that has come from the Election Commission. Uh, he is studying that report and he is meeting with the officials also and discussing uh, what uh, right. can be done. but uh, as far as the meeting of cm and governor is concerned because uh, earlier it was speculated that uh, uh, cm will be called by the governor but when governor came at 2 pm uh, from then till now uh, as we speak uh, we have no confirmation of any meeting of governor and cm from surin today right. so uh, as far as right. the decision of uh, governor is concerned we are expecting it late at night or maybe tomorrow Right. Thank you for your inputs, uh, Rashid ji and uh, Varun Singh. I'm moving out uh, quickly right now because we just have been able to access big development from Goa, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, CNN News 18 has the uh, autopsy report on Sonali Fogart, the 42-year-old who died under very mysterious circumstances. It was quite shocking, and uh, it says she's age 43 in the post-mortem report, and it uh, also says uh, reserved uh, belief is. that uh, pending chemical analysis histopathology and uh, serological reports the tissues presented however there are multiple blunt force injuries over the body in view of the above the manner of death for is for investigating officer to ascertain so there is more to it than the meets the eye the family has been alleging that for a while they have insisted that a murder charge or under section 302 should be included but this is the post mortem report i have a copy of it we've called it up on the screen here uh, the team uh, working uh, superbly to 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 get this now let's see this is what it is this is the important aspect ladies and gentlemen he says there are multiple blunt force multiple blunt force injuries over the body and in view of the above the manner of death is for investigating officer to ascertain manner of death for investigating officer to ascertain and this is being signed by dr mandar kantak who is the person who has performed the autopsy performed the autopsy on the dead body of sonali wife of sanjay fogart age 43 resident of hisar haryana and uh, this is as a matter with the police station in anjuna herman is with us herman and uh, now there are others also who are coming into the ambit of investigation with the needle of suspicion moving towards them but the post mortem also says she had multiple blunt force injuries to her well anand yes in fact if one looks at the second paragraph it clearly says and i quote however there are multiple blunt force injuries over the body and quote which clearly shows that there could have been signs of struggle or physical assault over her body and her family right from the start had been insisting for uh, for a cbi probe uh, because they believe there was a foul play now the brother on record has come, uh, come and stated uh, that after this post mortem report he is satisfied uh, with the investigation that has been carried out but he has asked Uh, for a wider probe he has in fact named a former and a very controversial haryana uh, haryana minister uh, saying that he could be behind one of the deaths and the uh, allegation coming forth uh, saying that two of the staff members who had accompanied her uh, on the on the night when she had been found dead uh, was in fact linked to this particular haryana minister now at this point what we are going to understand is that uh, is that uh, the post mortem having been complete the body could be expected to be taken now to haryana i also uh, what i can tell you anand that the, what has been happening at the highest level politically is that the goa chief minister is in constant uh, touch uh, with the haryana uh, cmo to ensure uh, that there is uh, no needle of suspicion but this is something that the family had been insisting from the start that it was not a case of uh, cardiac arrest but it could be much more what i can also mm. tell you on record is that the restaurant which she had visited and a very notorious restaurant which has been in the news uh, time and again for all wrong reasons uh, by the name of curlies in anjuna where she was present that night in in goa is also under the scanner 
Now two of right. the staff members who accompanied have been already uh, summoned. They will be questioned. Uh, is this is this restaurant now. owned by the uh, is this uh, restaurant owned by this former Haryana minister who's been uh, who's under the needle of suspicion now? And uh, have police sources no. also confirmed that this person is under the ambit of investigation? Uh, well, what I can tell you, there are two different things, Anand. One is, in fact, that Jee. the casino uh, that is owned by one of these Haryana ministers, he is under the scanner, but he has nothing to do with the restaurant. Now, the restaurant is a particular place that has been known for all notorious reasons. Uh, Curly is by name in the North Goa, is where she had been visiting. Haman, hold your thoughts. Goa was... police is reacting. Goa police is reacting on the Sunali Fogart matter. A police force should do for the murder case. So how is seriously on Goa police as this uh, incident comes? Whatever incident occurs, Goa police is always serious to find out the truth. So what about the report on the post-mortem report? Since the post-mortem has just been finished, we are yet to receive the um, post-mortem report in writing from the doctor. We are expecting it by evening it should come to us. Okay. And dead body no? is shipped to... The, the dead body has already been uh, sent to the um, airport and uh, tonight itself it will reach Delhi. Well, so once again, sources are saying, and this Haryana minister is the former Haryana minister, Gopal Kanda. Gopal Kanda had earlier been charged with the abetment to suicide of an air hostess, and there was a huge controversy. So he is the one who owns the casino. The cops are saying that we are going to continue the investigation. Now, what is the angle that the cops are going to pursue? Initially, they said that it is uh, uh, natural causes. There was no Ajivaji involved, but then it was poisoning. Now, blunt force trauma is, uh, is being seen here. Uh, that there are blunt force injuries over the body. That's what they are, uh, the post-mortem says. Uh, who, wh what is the connection with the casino and the staff? And what is the family alleging? Why does the family believe that this is murder? Well, Anand, what Herman. the family has come on record and which is, a, yeah, well, Anand, what the family has done is they've come on record and stated uh, that the staff members informed them after her death that she was here for a film shoot. Now, they say that before she could go to Goa, they were not informed of any sort of film shoot. And in case of any film shoot, how is it that the hotel room was only booked for a period of two days, which is the 22nd and the 23rd? Now, Gopal Kanda is someone, not just us, but it is that the uh, family members who have been alleging, uh, stating they have a role to play. They say that one of the staff members that accompanied her that night had certain links to Gopal Kanda. Now, ironically, Gopal Kanda happens to own one of the biggest casinos and himself being a controversial person owns one of the biggest mm -hmm. offshore casinos in Goa. Uh, now, could there be a direct link? One does not know. Besides that, what is under the scanner? What I can tell you is that Curly is a restaurant uh, which has been always you know, in the news for wrong reasons, is also under the scanner. But Gopal Kanda is someone who we know is controversial, a former minister. And what the family alleges is that he has certain links to one of the staff members. In fact, the brother, in the first day when he asked, uh, demanded a CID pro, uh, for a CBI probe, said mm. that these two staff members were linked to the, the murder of his sister. And mm. today you have Section 302, which is punishment right. of murder being applied, added to that FIR, has in fact made things far more, uh, you know, controversial in that sense. Right, right. Thank you for your inputs, Herman. We have to take a short break here on the Nation at 5. Plenty to share with you. One of those who called for the, made the Sartan Sejuda call has now been arrested. Finally, after more than 48 hours. But Raja Singh finds himself detained again. When we come back, the details. Stay with us.